Let me begin with the obvious. E-mobility has won the race. Hello and welcome. Volkswagen presented yesterday the Power Day. And needless to say, they, they got some inspiration from Tesla yeah, and the Battery Day. But before we jump into the topic itself, do not forget to subscribe and click that like button to support this channel. So Herbert Dies has anticipated this event one week earlier and he said it will not be a car presentation. And it was not, even if there were some presentations of the ID4, the Taycan and the Audi e-tron. Anyway, in a nutshell, this gave the pace of the event and listed the key topics that were to be discussed during the, the event. Making charging as easy as refueling, launching unified cells as early as 2023 and using such cells in 80% of their BEVs by 2030, reducing battery cells cost by as much as 50%, developing battery production capacity of 240 gigawatt hours split in six factories in Europe, increasing the high power charging network in Europe fivefold to 18 thousand charge points by 2025 and very important introduction of energy management and seeing the vehicle as an integral part of the future energy system as far as the vehicle becoming a power bank with vehicle to grid capabilities starting with 2022. The presentations were split in two one covering the battery cell unified design and technology and the second one on charging and energy. Speaking of battery, Volkswagen claims that there will be a shift in the approach a vehicle is designed and the starting point will be the development of the battery, which will be the heart, and the car will then be designed around the battery. Unified cells is a major thing for Volkswagen strategy and as I said, they aim at covering 80% of the applications with such unified cells by 2030, while the remaining 20% will have to be the more specific, more integrated to the car solutions, which can be prismatic cells, for example. The unified cells will have different chemistries depending on the vehicles they will be used in. I must say they went into many details on how batteries are built and how they work. Maybe they wanted to impress and show that they know a lot of stuff about batteries, but I guess they have lost part of the audience with these technical aspects. To make it simple, there will be three categories of chemistries used in the unified cells. For entry-level models, iron phosphate or LFP battery chemistry will be used. Such cell chemistry has the advantage of being very cost-effective and not use any cobalt. The downside of these cells, they have lower energy density, so they will be used for models that do not require a long range, so for the lower entry model levels. For volume models, the chemistry that will be used will be high manganese. It is expected to allow some cost savings, around 30%, yet they are relatively efficient. The end game for Volkswagen is the solid state and we need to remember that they invested in quantum scape that develop such solid state batteries and they expect these to come into production after 2025. Volkswagen says that solid state batteries will allow to reduce the charge speed by half and increase the range by 30%. Porsche is mandated to lead the high maintenance cells development. This will include using new materials like silicon that looks very promising, new electrolytes, and uh, additives as well as new cell design and improved cooling. Looking at the supply chain, Volkswagen says customers expect it to be transparent and sustainable. Therefore, they want more control, either directly getting involved or through strategic partners. The production design will evolve from cell to module to cell to pack and ultimately to cell to car for more integrated applications, where the pack will be part of the structural construction of the car. Another aspect that was emphasized is that 95% of the cells can be recycled and they showcased in a cool and very accessible video the full process where minerals can be brought back to production. 
the cells get shredded into granulates, then dried, the lithium electrolyte pumped out, the dried mass is sieved and raw materials are separated from granulates. The raw materials can be used in production again after this. The European battery cell capacity is projected to 240 gigawatt hour spread around six gigafactories. The first to produce these unified cells will be in Sweden together with Northvolt, a factory that is fully run on hydro energy and claims to produce the most sustainable battery cells in the industry with recycling capabilities. The next gigafactory will be in Germany and will supply cells for the volume sector. The following locations are to be confirmed with the intention of having one in Western Southern Europe, Spain, France or Italy were mentioned and another one in Eastern Europe. The success on battery production will be a combination of in-house capacity, government support and key partners. Scania is also part of the plan and e-mobility will now cover trucks and buses. Charging and energy was the other area of focus. Volkswagen showcased the public charging network built in China. The Chinese solution comes with a dedicated app with a set of services like the capability to reserve a charge point and its parking space, pay for that charging and also book some services like a restaurant nearby that charging location. In the US, on the other hand, Volkswagen highlighted the developments of Electrify America with 800 locations expected by the end of the year, with a total of 3,500 charge points in those locations. Now, coming back to Europe, the strategy is somewhat different. The starting point is Ionity, where Volkswagen co-invested together with BMW, Daimler and Ford. We have now also Hyundai that is part of the game. It now covers 20 countries with 325 locations and an average of one location being added every three days. Porsche has presented its plans to develop a dedicated exclusive network of high-speed charging open only to Porsche drivers with some exclusive concierge services and those will be located in strategic areas. On the top of that, Volkswagen used this event to make official a set of local partnerships with Enel in Italy, Iberdrola in Spain and BP in UK and Germany. The charging networks developed by these partners will allow reaching 18,000 high power chargers by 2025, which is a five-fold increase as compared to today. Volkswagen mentioned that accessing all these charge points will be plug and play, meaning that no cards, no charging app or other identifiers will be required, yet they didn't say exactly how that will operate. On their in-house charging infrastructure hardware, Volkswagen showed this funny robot that commutes on a parking lot and is able to recharge your car automatically. By the way, is it just me or does it look like it is pointing a gun at you? Another interesting product was the flagship, a charge point that has a battery pack integrated in it, allowing for fast charging without the need to make significant investments in the grid. Ultimately, and from my point of view, quite interesting, they presented the V2G or vehicle to grid bidirectional charge point. They showcased the whole concept in which the car is a mobile power bank and can send back energy to the house or to the grid. So the MEB platform will support vehicle to grid as early as 2022, allowing for a 93 with a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack a five days worth of energy to an average household, including the driving needs. To show the power of such a solution, Volkswagen made a parallel with the 6,500 gigawatt hours of energy from renewables that was lost in Germany alone due to lack of energy storage capacity last year, so only in 2020. That would have allowed powering 2.7 million battery electric vehicles. Although many similarities can be seen with Tesla in this uh, event, the messages were delivered in a completely different way, in a very formal German style slide deck presentation setup. So that was not Tesla's 
casual approach with Elon stories and jokes. Yet we can definitely see that Volkswagen is now taking Tesla very seriously and I believe we are looking at the main two contenders that will dominate tomorrow's EV market. What about you? What do you think about this? Leave a comment down below. Cheers and see you next time. Let me begin with the obvious. E-mobility has won the race. It is the only solution to reduce mobility emissions fast.